The Neon Captain Radiator is an amazing graphics generator. As a modular synthesizer guy, my goal is to make the radiator respond to the same voltages that modulate sound on the synth. More about that later. So let me show you the various inputs to the radiator and how they're used to make changes to patterns. On the back, there are eight inputs for control voltages. Before you connect to them, you'll need some stereo to mono mini jack splitters, like this one from Amazon. I picked up a bunch of them. There are three different types of control voltage, and they each work in different ways. CVs 1, 2, and 3, the black tip connectors, hook directly into the three control LFOs. CVs 4, 5, and 6, the red end of the splitters do too, but they bypass the LFO warpers. And the two quarter inch mono jacks are listening to audio, and these are rectified to only positive values. Here's a simple hookup, only a tip top one sample player going in to audio left. Let's start with a default reset circle. I'll prep shape A by cranking up LFO1 size and turn warp to pinch. Up in LFO1, I'll turn the warp type to VU slow and start some audio into audio L. Just There's listen. nothing to see until I turn up the warp value and immediately shape A responds. And you don't even need to turn warp up oh, all the way. Right. Back on shape A, let's turn up warp Everything value and the circle to pinches to the audio. Right. I'll turn up LFO1 rotate 2 and the circle grows, pinches, and rotates to the audio. To me. Everything going to be all Over right. in color, I'll crank up hue to max from LFO1 to and now the color changes too. Every I'll turn on the shape B circle, it's tuned a little bit, and the result pulses, oh, just as you would expect. Right. Listen to me. Listen to me. At double the speed Listen of shape A, we get a cycloid that Listen pulses to, to the sound. Everything is going to be all right. Listen mm. to me. To me. So how about some audio-controlled warping? And the different warp just, types react to the changing signal in a new universe of endless possibilities. But low pass is my favorite Every warp this week. With a low pass be. warp, shape B is filtered out oh, completely until right. LFO1 opens it up just and adds another layer of shape change. To me. Everything going to be all right. Right. By the way, LFO VU fast looks different because it lets the incoming audio do its work unfiltered. Listen. It looks too jittery for my taste, so I often stick with VU slow. So now I've plugged in a voltage controlled variable wave shape oscillator, a morphing terrarium, into CV3. And an infrared distance sensor, a coma commander, goes into wave shape control on the oscillator from sensor 1, while sensor 2 goes into CV5 on LFO2. I made a preset for this part. Let's take a look inside. Shape A is tuned to 110 Hz, is getting some size influence from LFO2, but mostly from LFO3. Up in color, LFO2 and LFO3 have 50% influence over hue. LFO2 is only getting a little bit of speed control from the commander. LFO3 is currently on a sine wave, but we don't care, we're not using it for that. If we switch it to CV3, the complex oscillator, shape A's size is driven by the new waveform. The morphing terrarium offers 192 waveforms in three banks, and I can morph between them from the front panel or by passing my hand over the commander. The waveform is nicely locked to the 110 hertz of shape A, and if I use the oscillator in a melody, the two are no longer locked. But still, I get some nice shapes.
Let me stop the sequencer. And I'll dial in a new waveform. In LFO3, I'm going to use the audio warp we haven't used yet, VU Size. So I'll start some we audio and turn up the warp. Bomb, and now the level of the audio is controlling the size of the waveform, and we get this reactive oscilloscope amounts. looking thing. The chance of your being hurt by an atomic bomb is slight. The atomic bomb flash could burn you. Here are some different shapes. I'm partial to a triangle. The atomic bomb may explode. Sometimes the bomb might explode without any warning. The bomb can explode any time of the year, day or night. We must be ready all the time for the atomic bomb. Keep listening. Start collecting now. Check this out. If I turn up LFO3 rotate on shape A, look at this gnarly twisting. And I should point out, this is not good for your laser. The high frequencies and amplitudes are sure galvo killers. But radiator will protect you a little bit, and as a result, this won't look the same when you project it. Don't drink tap water. It may be contaminated. What is your job? Take your place on the floor. Now I'll turn on LFO2 and we can modulate Shift that thing. Outer garments. Now we're getting those cool, thick These rainbows from the dead. very slight speed changes on you shape B. You can protect yourself and your family. These are the warning sounds you must recognize. You will hear three facts. I love playing the radiator like a theremin. These all mean that fallout is expected. You will never be able to judge for yourself how bad it is. When the immediate and shape exploration always reveals some sound, surprises. The siren will sound a steady note like this. Here is a reminder of what the air attack warning sounds like. Attack, fallout, attack, fallout, attack. Here are the warning sounds again. Attack, fallout, attack, fallout, attack. When you hear the attack warning, you and your family must take cover at once. This simple connection just feeds the output from a custom piezoelectric drum pad into the right audio channel. And LFO1 brings it in through VU Slow. The great thing about the drum pad is that it needs no power, but delivers about 10 volts when you hit it with a drumstick or a... Tinker toy. Of course, the analog inputs monitor on the utility panel is your go-to to see what's coming in. The secret sauce here is shape filtered through the low-pass warp, which shrinks it. Something like this would be great for a live improvisation to music. Here's a note about speed control. It doesn't take much to fatten these curves into really thick, beautiful rainbows. From my measurements, the LFOs respond about 8 hertz for every volt coming in. And even speed turned down to about 10%, there's still a difference. Even when shape B gets speed of about 8%, it's still enough to fill out the curve. Here's a mutable instrument rings feeding into the audio inputs. I like the ring's resonator because it sounds like a plucked string, and it shows off another way to use VU size. LFO1 is a sine wave tuned to about 100 Hz, and shape A is almost tuned to double the speed, using the not square shape, which I like because the corners aren't connected. And LFO rotation is turned to the max. Let me start the sequencer. This reacts like a bell, kind of. And the length of the decay affects how much the pieces rotate. Short, plucky decays give the shape little hits.
and long decays force a lot of rotation and bend the shape into arcs. I think this looks pretty organic, no matter what the base shape happens to be. Here are some examples using the Coma Commander by itself. This one uses the low pass warp again that I love so much. You can hear the filtering effect in the Radiator XY audio here. I'm thinking you could effectively accompany a nice live soundtrack with this. This preset is kind of a game. The goal of this is to slow down and stop the movement as best you can. The sort of thing you do when you have too much time on your hands. I like this one as a performance piece too. I love the rainbows when it turns. When you get used to routing external signals through the LFOs, you can control just about any parameter in this thing. Rotation and color are naturals. Just remember that it doesn't take much to make big changes in the patterns. Be sure to mix up warp, speeds, colors, and rotational offset. Like I've said before, the radiator is always full of surprises. These piezo pads are cheap and effective. I bet if you scrounged around, you could build one. Or I could put you in touch with the guy who built mine. Coma commanders are extremely hard to find. But if you head over to Adafruit.com, they have many pages of light and touch controllers you could probably use with just a little bit of extra circuitry. If you're a modular Euro racker, you have lots of control options. The dope for A178 theremin controller looks pretty cool. The A198 ribbon controller definitely goes on my want list. The A174-2 pitch bend wheel looks like it has some possibilities too. And the Intelligel planar joystick control would make a thoughtful birthday present from you to me. Just hint, hint. But barring that, a Moog Theramini with its CV outputs would be the perfect compact concert in a portable package. Paging Dorrit Chrysler, Dorrit Chrysler, call reception please. I've successfully driven the radiator audio inputs with an iPod and tapped into an FM radio and we had two radiators at a show in April. So if you want to take your radiating to a new level, audio and voltage modulating are quick, easy, and effective. I'll post a bunch of presets on the Radiator Facebook page, or I can even mail them to you. 800 presets fit in only about 3K. So that wraps it up for this video. I guess I'm pretty much done here. So long, everybody.